the wiring harness was kind of stalled a little bit when I think a few things through. Uh, I've started, I started segregating out the termination point. There's basically three plugs that go into the ECU. This is the main plug that goes to the, uh, the injectors. This is like the first plug, one through 20 or whatever. And this is like 21 through 39. I don't know what it is, but you know what I mean. So I started separating those out. And I got to thinking, there's a really excellent article written about converting a L28 ET harness to using it on, a, on, this, on this computer. Well, I've got to thinking, I've got a harness here that's designed to fit into an S30 chassis. Okay, that's the original 24280ZX chassis, 24280Z chassis, the S30, okay? And what makes it unique about that is the kind of plug, that white plug there goes to the, um, goes under the dash of a 2AZ. Um, those wires there, which go, will go to relays, are inside the compartment, the, 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 uh, underneath the dash as well. So remember, the whole point of this was to adapt a harness for a 300ZX computer to a 280Z, all right, body. Well, I got to thinking, it's not too much of a difference between a 300ZX computer and a 280ZX turbo computer, okay? They're, they have the same fitment as far as the three plugs to plug into the computer. There's only a few differences on a few of the wires. And of course, the map is different and the O2 sensor is different. So right now, my thought is, as long as I'm going this far, and I'm also going to get a nice brand new firewall plug so that it you know, seals up well. As long as I'm going this far, might as well go all the way. So my, my plan is evolving to where inside the, the, the passenger compartment, I'm thinking about putting like a, maybe a six or a nine pin plug, whatever it takes, that will actually make that swap. So you'll have two plugs coming up out of the harness and one from the computer and one plug coming down here. And basically, depending on what computer you plug in, you will plug in one or the other plug. So if you have a 300ZX, you'll put one plug and that'll continue the wiring through the harness that adapts to a 300ZX. Or you plug in the 280ZX turbo computer plug into the harness and it adapts it for that. So to control the relays and some of the other sensors. That way, this cable, this harness will be able to be used with either the 300ZX computer or a 280ZX computer, whichever one you want to use. They're both the turbo versions, I should say. Whichever one of those computers you want to use, you can use. The only thing that's different, besides a couple of the wiring connections here, is the MAF. So I'll have a, I'll have two MAF sensors. I'll have one for the ZX, and for the 300ZX, and one for a 280ZX. So one goes to the airflow meter, and one will go to a, um, to a, um, MAF, a an airflow meter versus a mass airflow. Okay, one's use the hot wire, and one uses the, the flapper vein. So I'll have to get another another connector to go on this side. You'll just just use the one you need. The other one will be will be left unhooked. Uh, and the other thing is the O2 sensor, which goes over here. I think it's that one right there, or is, it, is that one up there? I'm sorry. The um, the 300 ZX uses a Titania type O2 with a heated element. The 280 ZXT uses a zirconia type with unheated element. So I don't know if the Heating of the element's a big deal. I guess I could get a zirconia with a heated element. I don't know if that's even important or not. But the fact is, they'll have a different kind of plug. So you'll have the three-prong plug that plugs into the titania and maybe the single plug that goes into the zirconia. That that's the kind used for the ZX Turbo. So we'll need to do that. So you'll have two, two plugs here, two plugs here. The rest of the things are consistent. You know, the, the throttle position sensor is the same. Uh, the air regulator is the same. The crank angle sensor for the distributor, that'll be the same. Uh, so anyway, that's the plan. Like I said, it's evolving. I said, like I said, I'm putting a lot of effort into this. I want to make it flexible, if you will. And I'm going to do that before I heat shrink everything up. Which brings me to the next thing. All those red wires are configured as, you know, they go in the one wire that goes out, goes to the battery. So the direct 
battery positive to the injectors. Well, some of the computers, uh, I'm not sure which ones, but some of them have provisions for high impedance, low impedance, and for the, if you're running low impedance injectors, like low ohm resistors, if too much current will flow, unless you put a resistor pack for a high impedance type computer. I guess if, if that makes any sense to you at all. Uh, those people who, who are familiar with um, the 2AZ computer, you'll know there's like a whole resistor pack as part of the harness. So, my plan is to right here, before it goes into the, into the engine, into the uh, passenger compartment, I'm going to put two plugs out here that will adapt it to the resistor pack of an S30. So that if for some reason you happen to have a low impedance injector on a computer that's designed for a high impedance setup, you can easily get around that by simply plugging in the resistor pack. If you don't want it, you just take those two connectors, you plug them together and bypass the resistor. So I'm going to add a resistor pack right in here. I'm going to run individual, six individual reds to a six-pin Molex-like connector. And then that, and then you'll have the one thick one for the battery will be the other Molex connector. And you can just plug them together and it's hooked up. Or disconnect them and put the resistor pack in series. And then you can you don't have to worry about impedance mix, mix smashes or too much current flowing through your computer. So, you know, like I said, it's, it's getting a little more complex. But again, this is the time to think things out and go slowly so that, you know, try to plan as much as you can. The other thing I'll probably end up doing is put some generic wires in there. I might just pick a color. I don't know what it'll be, but a color, I'd like to have one that's not, no, no colors I use for anything else, right? And put like maybe two or three all the way from one end to the other, just long wires. And those will be like for future use. So if I'm missing something, I want to add something or whatever, the cable, the wiring will already be there and I don't have to worry about, you know, my heat shrink, not even having to tape it on the outside of the heat shrink or something goofy like that. No doubt I will miss something, okay? In life, you always miss something. You, nobody's perfect. So undoubtedly, I'll get this whole thing done and I will have missed one thing and I'll say, ah, you know, but there's no reason not to try your best you can. So you try for perfection and you expect as good as you can get. All right, that's kind of the game plan here. So anyway, that's that. Uh, like I said, I can't start doing any of my terminating until I get, not, oh, and the firewall grommet. So I found a firewall grommet. It's pretty damn expensive, like 50 bucks. You know, I don't know. It is what it is. But supposedly, it's a correct firewall grommet that will fit the S, I mean, the guide custom manufacturer. So to get the firewall grommet on, uh, probably the easiest way I don't know if it's from the bottom or the top. I mean, the only thing that's the only thing that's hard to fix here is that pump thing, which I probably shouldn't have done, but that comes apart real easy. So I can just, as long as these wires are not terminated, I can slip that thing over, put it in position, and then continue work. So firewall grommet, some extra wires I had to order because I was missing a couple colors I didn't have. Uh, look into the Molex connectors for the dropping resistors. Uh, Make sure I have the right O2 connectors. Probably get another MAP connector for the standard airflow. Not another MAP connector, but an airflow meter connector. Then I can continue. But anyway, that's that's the progress update. Like I said, it's just uh, it's kind of morphing into something more than I anticipated. But like I said, there's no uh, there's no real rush on this. I've got a perfectly great driving car. This is really just uh, just an exercise to see if it can be done. If it works out, that'd be great. I know Jeff needs one of these for his turbo, and if his uh, if the 300ZX works better than the airflow meter version, so be it. I'll be able to uh, to um, to put that in, um, in my turbo test stand, and ultimately in my car. If for some reason, however, we get in this whole mess and the the ZX airflow meter just it doesn't work like we like it should for whatever reason. Then again, this cable can perfectly adapt to a a known good working 280ZX setup, which I have and would fit my car perfectly. I wouldn't have to even use the I wouldn't even use the old um, original cable that I have on the test stand. There'd be no need to because, like I said, this one's custom built to fit into an S30. So it's sort of like, that's like the backup plan. You know, plan B is I use this 
and run my airflow meter it's a perfect fit in my car and the 300 zx was just a you know an exercise but yeah you know, like i said keeping it a little bit flexible it's easier to have the wires and not use them than to not have them and need them anyway more on this layer i just want to give you an update but here's some of the uh here's some of the stuff i've already gone through as you can see i got a whole variety of uh wires and whatnot this oh by the way this is the distributor this is the ignition plant i'm using Okay, this came out of, I think it was a 92 Pathfinder. Uh, it'll get its hot lead from one of two places. You can, I can either run the hot lead off of the harness, so I may run an extra lead for that, or you could just run a lead from this directly to the hot lead that's in the existing S30. I haven't decided that yet, what I want to do there. I kind of like the idea of having fewer wires to have to hook up outside of the harness. So, I mean, I could just put a ground lead, a hot lead, all through the harness, and you just plug it in, okay? But, I don't know. And again, I'm kind of on the, ed on the edge about wanting to do that. This is, the, this is the unit I got out of the Pathfinder. I believe this is the actual correct unit that Jeff gave me to go with the car. I don't know that there's any real difference. I mean, the coils look exactly the same. I assume it's just the way it's configured a little bit. I like this because of the form factor. It's self-contained. It's all there. You find a place to bolt it to the car, you're good to go. Uh, so that's kind of reason why I'm going with this. This one, I don't think that, uh, yeah, the coil's not mounted anywhere, so I have to figure out a way to mount the coil. Yeah, it's a little bit of an issue. Or I could just not use this coil and use a stock coil that's in the car. So, you know, and from that perspective, this might work better. So I haven't made up my mind what I'm going to do here yet, but you know, we'll see. Hey, maybe I'll put two different connectors, you know? Choose your choose your poison, which one you want to use. Like again, I like I like the idea of the flexibility when it comes to making your own harness. Just try to make it adaptable and just extra parts you don't use. I did end up getting some nice new uh, ground cable here. The ground cable I originally had, if you remember, was really stiff. I got this stuff. This is much better. So that'll be nice. And uh, that's it. Anyway, that's all for now. That's the uh, diagram I'm using to build this thing from. I'll, I'll give you an update when I get some more connectors in. Thanks for watching. Bye.